Is this the first time that LACMA is doing a partnership with the Shanghai Museum? And it's also significant, even though it's a very modest show in size, that it's the first exhibition of Chinese painting ever organized by LACMA. I really wanted to focus on this kind of Ming Dynasty painting dating from the 15th and 16th century, so it's roughly equivalent to the Renaissance. Some of these painters lived at the same time as Leonardo and Michelangelo. There are 10 paintings in the exhibition. Five of them are by court painters who worked for the emperors of the Ming Dynasty in the Forbidden City. Palaces had big ceilings, so these are very tall paintings, many of them, designed to be shown in very public spaces within the palace and to be seen by people who worked in the government at very high levels. So they often contain messages, uh, symbolism revolving around uh, the, con the consequences of good government, of the, um, the emperor's mm -hmm. own uh, mandate and image in terms of having, creating a harmonious rule throughout Chinese society. Many of the paintings in the show are Taoist. So they explore the Taoist philosophy and religion, which believes that everything is made of energy and that the movement of energy in the world is governed by two forces called yin and yang that everyone's heard of. This religion played a big role at the court uh, and was, is still very big in China. It's the one primary religion that was born in China. There's some fantastic images of both male and female Taoist immortals, uh, remarkable beings who can transform their shape. They can be in 20 places at the same time. They can move be between this world and the next world easily. They're not bound by the, uh, the parameters that, that we're bound by in this physical world. And they have a high degree of moral integrity. So they really are saints in that way and venerated uh, still widely today in China. Uh, there is one great figure who is a very popular Taoist immortal named Li Tiaguai, who appears twice in the show. His first name means the Iron Crutch. And his story goes like this. He was a great Taoist master. He was very spiritually evolved. He had disciples. And he had learned the technique of leaving his body, of, of going into a kind of astral projection. One day, he decided just to leave this world. He was going to transcend the boundaries of yin and yang and life and death and time and space and just get beyond all of that. And he was fully capable of doing that. And so he says um, to his head disciple, I'm going to go away for a week. Um, and so my body will, be, will look like it's dead. My body will be inert and I will be back in a week. But if by some chance I don't come back, you can just burn my body. Just cremate the body because I'm not coming back. I will have succeeded in transcending the boundaries of this world. Six days went by, and the disciple gets this urgent call from home. His mother is dying. He's got to go home and take care of her and watch, watch over her, her last moment. So he looks at Lee's body and says, he's been gone six days. He's probably not coming back. So he burns the body and takes off. The next day, Lee's spirit comes back. His body's gone. It's been cremated. He's very upset. And he needs a body. So he finds the first corpse he can find. He finds the corpse of a, a hideous, uh, crippled beggar by the side of the road who's just died. And his spirit enters the body and reanimates it. And he comes alive. But he's got a crutch made of iron. And so from that time on, he's called Iron Crutch Lee, or Lee Tiaguai, Lee of the Iron Crutch. And he's still widely worshipped today. He was venerated by emperors and peasants alike. <laughs>